now, but basically it says this. And if somebody, if a church body, my consistory, my classes, my synod, has some ideas that maybe I'm not very, very sound on some doctrine, they have the right to come to me and say, we want to examine you on this. And I have to say, fine, I'll be examined. And if I refuse, I am by that very fact deposed, suspended, and to be deposed. It's a specific, pointed kind of form that doesn't allow, if I may put it that way, any wiggle room. There's no room for an office bearer to try to squeeze in some false doctrine or even to allow false doctrine to go unchecked in his congregation. There's no room for that. He is pledging full allegiance to these creeds as far as every article and every point of doctrine that they fully agree with the Word of God. Now, what's wrong with that? Why would anyone object to having office bearers sign that form? Well, believe me, they bring objections. They say, there are those who would argue, the form of subscription puts the confessions in a place that's higher than they ought to be. They would say, some of them, that it almost makes them to be infallible. You may not even question the confessions. It gives them the same authority as Scripture. And they say, but we know that the confessions are not identical to Scripture. They do not have the same authority. They were written by men who could make mistakes, men who did not have a perfect understanding of the truth. And so we mustn't have documents that have that kind of authority that makes it almost equal to the Scriptures. The argument is even, look, you can't say that the confessions fully agree with the Word of God because the Word of God contains far more than what the confessions do. The confessions don't address everything. The Heidelberg Catechism doesn't talk about missions. The Bible does. The Heidelberg Catechism doesn't talk explicitly about good stewardship of your time and money. The Bible does. So how can you say that the confessions fully agree with the Word of God? That argument is false and misleading. In the first place, the formula of subscription is not saying that our creeds are exhaustive. They are not saying that our creeds contain everything that the Word of God does. It's all it's saying is this. What our creeds do contain are in harmony with this Word of God. Every doctrine in that creed is in full, perfect harmony with what the Word of God teaches. That's what we are saying in the formula of subscription. Not that the creeds contain everything that the Bible does. No one says that. The form does not say that. The form does not either imply even that the creeds are infallible. The form goes on to say, if you have a disagreement with the creed, you may bring that disagreement. You may try to convince the churches that the creed is wrong there, and you may succeed, and the church may say, you're right, we have to change the confession. There is a way of doing that. No one ever says the creeds are equal to the Bible or that they have more authority. The authority of the, script, of the creeds is dependent on the Bible. They have the authority of the Word of God only insofar as they agree with the Word of God. So long as they agree with the Bible, they have the authority derived from Scripture. There are those who argue that the, the creeds are too restrictive. Creeds silence our office bearers. It does not allow discussion, free discussion of doctrine because there is a fear always of suspension and deposition. 
They would point to Luther and say, look at Luther. He nailed 95 theses to the door of the church in Wittenberg, and many of the things he nailed to that door were contrary to the accepted dogma of the church. And we can't do that because we have these confessions. So there will never be another Luther, not in the Reformed churches, never another Reformation such as he had, and no development of doctrine. The creeds are too restrictive, is the argument. But I reject that again. If the confessions do teach what the Word of God teaches, then the office bearer is only bound by this, the Bible. Now, no believer should object to being bound by Scripture. And so long as the teachings of the creeds are in harmony with this, the office bearer is bound by the Word of God. Nothing more, nothing less. But confessions do not hamper theological discussion. In fact, they should do the opposite. They should encourage good theological discussions. When men read the confessions and they get together and discuss them, it should encourage development of doctrine. The confessions, however, do help tremendously. They help tremendously by channeling the discussion in a good path so that our discussion does not go off in a wild direction, in a philosophical direction where everyone's lost. The, the confessions become the foundation for the future development of doctrine. It's the foundation upon which we can now build. But as we will see Sunday morning in Dune, as Paul said, I have laid the foundation. Let every man take care how he builds thereon. You build on the foundation of the creeds. You don't go off in another direction. You build up. You build higher. You come to a clearer knowledge of God. The confessions become the foundation for future development because the truth is one. And the truth of today is resting on the Reformation, which is resting on the ancient church. The church has developed in the doctrine, and the confessions are a tremendous help for development of doctrine in a good way. The work of the Spirit they are, leading and guiding the church into the truth. Not infallible. The church always allows that you might find something in the confessions that's doctrinally wrong. And you may go to the church and try to show that that is wrong. Prove it from Scripture. But nonetheless, highly regarded because of the promise of Christ to send His Spirit to guide the church into the truth. Is that formula of subscription necessary? History says emphatically yes. After the great Senate of Dort, when the formula of subscription was drawn up, the Reformed churches in the Netherlands quickly declined spiritually. They allowed liberalism and false doctrine to come into the church. 200 years after the Senate of Dort, a new formula of subscription was drawn up which enabled the people who signed it to interpret it in one of two ways. They could say, we accept the confessions of the church because the confessions agree with the Word of God. Or they could interpret it this way. We accept the confessions of the church insofar as they agree with the Word of God. And those who did not want the Reformed faith interpreted it the latter way. And now they could sign the formula of subscription and they could say, well, we don't believe Article 27 of the Belgian Confession, so we don't, we're not bound by that. We're only bound by the confession.